This is a brand new ministry that has opened up, all because of his amazing story. In so many ways that we can use, because people don't always know the language, but they can look at the story, and they can tell the stories from one group to another. And so I wanted y'all to see this, to be able to uh, put, the, put this in your mind, that this may be something that you can use in your churches and with your family, your children, your, you know, your youth, mission trips and such. Belize has opened up the door to um, men and women coming from New Mexico have been going into the school system and they're teaching the story cloth in the school system because they have... Uh, um, they have to teach religion in their classes, but they had no curriculum. And so now they have the curriculum. And so we have uh, people that come from New Mexico that are going into Belize, teaching the teachers, giving them Bibles, preparing them so that when their classes start, they can teach. And El Salvador is another area. Small countries around Belize are hearing about this story plot and what it can do to that nation and to the people there. And God is just blessing this place. I wanted y'all to know what God has done. So when we just we just sang the song about his story and his grace. And it was too great. So thank you for sharing it with us. It's been a good year, a year and a half for myself, uh, and, and for Catherine too. Uh, I, I just want to share one one bit with you. The choir that I sing with uh, went to Cape Town, South Africa last year for a mission trip, and I was sharing it with them. Uh, we had our agenda all planned out, exactly what we were going to do. We were going to be paired with the Living Hope Ministries down there in Cape Town. And, uh, we just knew that. Uh, we were going to make an impact for God on the city of Cape Town. It was, it was in our plan. And we got there, and absolutely nothing. Zilch worked out. Nothing. Out the window. He went on too high. Out the window. He must be right handed. He went out the window. But I saw I saw this group be as flexible as any group I've ever been around. And God's agenda came in and we we did things that we never dreamed possible and, and our lives were blessed just tremendously. We we were changed uh, completely. And uh, uh, it, that's I just wanted to share that with you about, uh, about going and, and how, how God works and how He takes care of things. And, and when He gets ready to do something, it can make you never watch your plan go on. It can make you plan go on. But uh, we had a wonderful time. And singing with that choir has been one of the greatest blessings that uh, I've uh, had in my life. Um, we traveled all over the Eastern Seaboard and uh, sing. Our own concert, our own concert, which is our main state. We do a lot of work with uh, some of the very own gospel groups <coughs> and the business today. We do backup singing for them. But uh, we say we don't perform. When, when we when we book when we book a, a concert date, we let them know right off and we're not here to perform. Uh, we're here uh, to minister. And uh, we always uh, close a uh, concert for the time of commitment and prayer. So we, we want God to be lifted up and we want Him to receive the glory for all of them. So that's where I've been in, in the last, well, I've been on the choir now a, a, a little over four years, but uh, this past year has really been good. I'm very grateful for all the opportunities you give us. You know, I struggle with what I want to say today. Uh, usually I do not struggle, and usually I, I, I can pretty much put something together with the help of the Lord, and I feel good and comfortable about it. But I, as I was thinking about today, and maybe it's kind of a carryover from last night, I, you know, God knew what He was doing when He put this, we had to put this on paper. Uh, 
me read verse two of scripture for you, and then we'll share some remarks with you. From John chapter 14, and uh, read verse uh, 23. You know, verse 23 is what I want to. Uh, you know, I hope you take time to read the whole context of, the, of this. But Jesus said to him, "If a man love me." He will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now that really caught my attention. So the question, or really the title of a little remark here, is the question, uh, the home without a house. <coughs> what is it? Usually we think about a house being a home. But what's a home without a house? And what image you come to your mind any time you hear the word home? The most common use of the word, of course, is to simply depict the place where we live. Uh, where we, uh, and we talk about a church, well, it's where we worship. Well, just as a church can worship without being in a building, so you can be home without being in the house. When we're talking about home, we're talking about something that plays a very central role in our identity. It's a place of family relationships. It's a place of personal development. It's a place where lifelong memories are being made. Home is a very powerful thing in everyone's life. Ideally, it should be a place of solace and protection from the outside world. It should be a place where we go to allow our wounds heal. A place that uh, we are that it takes us away from the day-to-day uh, infl- inflictions of, of outside pressures. At times it seems like it's the only place where we are somebody. Our lives have some significance. It's a place to keep back kick back and be ourselves. You know, we are good at uh, portraying who we want people to think we are. But a home is somewhere we can really be ourselves and hide from the pressures of the world. Whether we admit it or not, we tend to go through our entire lives never escaping the influence of the home of the home we grew up in. Our self-image our idea of what we are here for, what our goals are, what we believe we should strive for, the way we get our pleasure, the way we work, the way we learn. All of these things are significant because they are influenced somehow of what home is all about. Home is much bigger than what we can articulate in words. Some of you are sitting out there right now with a puzzled look on your face. You say, what has all this got to do with the Scripture, and what does it have to do with us? <laughs> well, we have a Father who lives within us. The Scripture and verse that I read to you here says, We will come into your heart and make our abode with you. And that we indicates to me that it's, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will come to you, and we will make our home with you. So now we get to the, the, the point. When we were in a distant land, and we were away from our home, our house, and we were away from our families, We all, and I've heard this time and time again at all the reunions and every time we come together, we all found a home in that little place in marriage and called Trinity Baptist Church. And I like to think that when we moved into that church, verse 23 says, God moved in with us. <laughs> We make our home with you. And God, who is perfection, is a perfect homemaker. 
He knows exactly what needs to be done and how it needs to be done and how much of this and how much of that and what we can take and what we cannot. He's a perfect parent. Our Father. And in the home that we found in Trinity, we found acceptance of ourselves as an individual. We found the fact that we could share as a mutual family and not be greedy and just want to do it for ourselves. Not some private center. There's a home where we found that we were truly loved, truly saved, and truly important. So no matter what your experience might be in the life of a home, of a building, where you grew up, home is a word that God meant to be synonymous with love. And we found that in, in Trinity Church. And we moved forward from that. And one thing that I heard a comment last night, and it just blessed my heart, and Catherine and I talked about it uh, uh, this morning. <coughs> You know, in our in our sharing of stories last night, we have moved on from the fact that we cannot find a trinity that like we had over here. Uh, we're not stuck in that time frame. Uh, we're not living in the past, but we have used that as a basis to build upon and to move forward. And that's what God wants us to do. You see, the church relationship is for all those who are in love with Christ, seeking to be obedient to Him. If we confess Him as our Lord and Savior, wherever we are, not in building, but in His presence. So we have a home without a house. And I, for one, am grateful for that. I just wanted to share those brief comments with you this morning and, and say I'm, I'm so glad that, that we're moving forward. We love Trinity. <coughs> always be special. Each one of you will always be special. And we have something that a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. So we rejoice to be happy about it. So, okay. God has been good to us. God sometimes wakes me up in the middle of the night uh, trying to give me some ideas and uh, uh, some, some things. And uh, that's, I guess that's when I hear best and when I listen best is when I wake up in the middle of the night and God is seeking to say something to me. And uh, last night was one of those nights. Uh, it must have been about uh, 2 o'clock, somewhere around, excuse me, my mouth right. Uh, must have been somewhere around uh, 2 o'clock, and so um, I got up and got my paper and pen and my briefcase and went into the bathroom, which the door to. <laughs> Didn't want to disturb the cat. Of course, she'd already disturbed me when I had the TV on at uh, midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Are you asleep? Are you watching TV? Uh, yeah, I'm watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but God was uh, speaking to me. He said, uh, uh, and write this down and then share it with the people. And before I could understand exactly what he was saying, uh, my hand just kind of went to the paper and began to write the names of the people who were here. And I said, what in the world is going on here? And God is impressed upon my heart that you know, sometimes we, we need affirmation as individuals. It's good to have affirmation as a group and as, as a Christian. Sometimes we, we need affirmation just for ourselves. <clears throat> and so this is what um, I wrote down at 2 o'clock this morning. If, if it's not uh, uh, correct or anything like that, please excuse me. Uh, don't blame God. <laughs> Uh, and the first name went on the paper was Terry. And, um, you know, God 
these many things, and then uh, I have trouble getting them out. The first name on the paper was Terry, and he said, uh, 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 Tell Terry, thank you for showing us how God is still in the miracle business. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry came to me last night, and I hope they keep in mind my sharing this statement. He made he came to me after service last night. He said, you know, so that list you just read of all the deceased people said so seven years ago, my name has been on that list. But God spared his life. And we see in him, as God showing us, that he is still in the business. Still in the business. Kathy, Kathy's name came around under that said, thank you for your hard permissions. Bob Coker's name was next, came to him. He said, Tell Bob what a gentle spirit and a tender heart you have. Then let her name came up. <laughs> oh, Lord, what, what can we say about letter? <laughs> Thank you, Leonard, for introducing me to. Uh, Power lunches long before it was trendy. <laughs> we used to go over to the Oak Club at Swingdale and have lunch together, and what's going on uh, is absolutely uh, amazing. What I learned from him. Lynn's name, of course, came next. And thank you for your ability to size up the situation quickly in strange lands and your love for those who have no hope. And then there was Walt's name. And I said, okay, Lord, what about Walt? And he said, well, you know, when Walt gets that physical look in his face, that's a signal that he has a better idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> God has spoken to him. Beth was next. Thank you, Beth, for your desire to be um, the best instrument possible of God's love and peace in dire circumstances. And Dr. John was up next. Here, what are we going to say about him? What does God have want me to share about him? John. God wants to thank you for your dry wit. <laughs> for your humor. For a sense of humor that has diffused many tense situations by showing that God has a sense of humor. Pat, for you, for you, God is thankful and praises you and blesses you because you have been given a great talent of music. And more importantly, uh, he's giving you willingness to share it. Uh, Brad and Sue are already gone. Uh, they had to leave early this morning, but uh, they were on the list. No one escaped from this, so you, you're your time to <laughs> I put Brad and Sue, Brad and Sue together uh, for showing us that God's love is sufficient, whatever the circumstances. And Carolyn, here you are. You've only been coming to the Eugenians two or three times. I think maybe about the third time, twice a second time you've been here. But you fit right in to come part of us. Thank us, uh, thank you for allowing us to see you grow into a fine young lady that expresses the love of Jesus. And Dennis, even though you've never been to Trinity, you have become one of us. And you can hang with us. <laughs> <laughs> you can hang with us. God has made you part of this man. Charlie is next. And we're grateful for Charlie's 
ability to analyze a situation and to apply scriptural solutions so that God gets the glory. Faith is not quite so. It's not. Dial for the ability to work through a broken heart. And I can't read my writing here. <clears throat> for the ability to work through a broken heart and come out as a better person that God can use in a mighty way. You and Rick have shown us some grand biblical qualities. And then there's my friend Bill tonight back there. Uh, I could uh, probably write a whole page about him, but just to sum it up briefly as God laid it on my heart. Thank you for your ability in a moment's notice to be the good Samaritan and never let self get in the way. Sharon, I need you to take us out of the rest of
you read what you said. That's right. That was the case. That's right. Uh, and just about everything that comes our way that is good, Catherine's first one said, Thank you, Jesus. Because we know it all comes from you. I didn't get a, I didn't get a, a signal on that. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because you just verbalized thank you to each of us, and that takes a kind-hearted, compassionate man. And we thank you. Amen. 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 God has been good to me down through the years. I've got a lot, a lot more changing to do, but I'm headed in the right direction, and that's what we need all to do, be headed in the right direction. And we put ourselves in a situation where God bless us, He will bless us. But so often we hide out, or we turn our minds off, or we just don't think that God can do anything, and when we get in that frame of thinking, God's not going to do anything. We put ourselves in the right position. God will bless us. No doubt about it. So we're grateful that you come this that you came this weekend. Hope that you've had a good time. Uh, some have driven many miles, Lynn and Leonard, about nine and a half hours. Uh, the, the nights and Bob Coco <coughs> all the way from New Mexico and Charlie uh, from Delaware and uh, uh, Rick. Delaware also. Carolyn and Dennis drove all the way from Auburn, Alabama. And uh, the uh, spawns back there came all the way from New Mexico. The second year they've done that. God bless you for that. And, and may you, I hope you found something this weekend to hang on to. And Walt Beth up from Columbia, or Lexington, or Lexington, Lexington uh, South Carolina. Um, they're close now, so they have no excuse about their team. But you know, uh, God, God has been good to us. I'm really grateful for that. And I just wanted to uh, share those things with you today. And to once again say to you that God deals in you.